Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So as always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. Welcome, Anvita. Thank you, Seema, and welcome to our podcast this week. So Anvita, um, today I have actually taken the liberty of breaking the queue of questions and slotting a question in. Because, as you know, we've got this backlog of questions over months. They've all been filed up. They're all in line to be answered at a certain time. But this one came in. And I've just finished saying this um, at a recent talk about how parents need to be more open with their children. They need to be more encouraging so that the children can come and talk to them rather than scaring the children into thinking that they can never come to um, approach them with all their problems, etc. We said this in the last um, session that we did. So when this particular question came in today, it had me in two minds because on one side, it was one of the most sex positive parents that I have come across. And I felt really happy to read this question, but there was also something about it which had me thinking just a little bit. And I thought, I think that we need to approach this today and I need your um, advice on this. So it says, is it normal to gift a sex toy to my 13 year old daughter? So he goes on to say, I'm the father of a girl who is about to turn 13 in a few months. I believe in sex positive parenting and discussing sex in my house is not taboo at all. I am planning on gifting my daughter a sex toy for her 13th birthday. It's her first sex toy. Is this normal or would I be crossing the line by doing so? And if it is normal, then is it too soon to be introducing her to a sex toy what would be the appropriate age to gift her one? Yeah, this is the tricky, as in I hear you, how, um, I, I, you know, I first want to say, oh, what a father, you know, is talking. This is where we ultimately want to go, where sex and sexuality is normalized. Uh, but the more I think about it, where I want to go with it is that I don't know where this child is and how mature this child is and where she is on her sexual journey. You know, how much has she thought about her sex and sexuality? Is she at a stage where she is exploring sex toys, you know? Um, so 13 year old, some are very mature, are very sexual, have been sexually active for some time. Some have not even considered sex and sexuality at 13. So I don't know anything about the child. And what I want to say is that I want to keep the child at the center. And I would want her to decide her sexual journey and decide when she is ready to explore a sex toy versus it being introduced by a parent in some ways. Um, so my question is more around where is this child and where is she on her sexual journey? Um, so, yeah, so I think it's a bit tricky. Uh, yeah, I because um, I think that, you know, we as adults, like you were saying earlier when we were talking about it, that we as adults are at a certain journey in our lives. So we have experienced certain things. We've come to certain points. And we've arrived there through a progression of events and emotions and just environments. And so to actually say that this is okay to do it for a 13 year old, I'm not sure that it's the right age. Or I mean, one is like we were saying that, you know, maybe she's not at that right point yet, but is she actually ready for it? I find that a lot of 13 year olds, I mean, there are a lot of 13 year olds who are sexually active already. They've already thought of it. They've, they've come to understand that it's something that they want to do, but an equal number of 13 year olds are still at that stage when the idea of romance and sweetness, you know, all of that is still very, very important. This whole idea of just holding hands or just that little first touch or that first kiss or the flirting or, you know, the messages. 
And I think that um, if we get to the sex story too quickly, it might sort of, it might take away this part of the journey. And I think that's a huge um, part of your, your um, growing up years. Absolutely, because you know we have to allow every every person to go through their own experimentation, getting to know their body, understanding their body. Uh, you know, they will discover their vaginas or penis for the first time. They will understand what that touch feels like, uh, where the touch feels like pleasure. But all of that is through experimentation, right? It's all about discovering, uh, discovering your own vagina, touching your own vagina, understanding the anatomy of it and all. So there is a whole process of, through experimentation that people do it. And, and what age they do it is, is so different for different people. And we don't know that. So we need to allow that experimentation to happen. We need to allow them to discover their own sexuality and their own body. So sometimes as adults, we might give too much information or too much understanding, you know, so they might not be ready for a sex toy, they might still be um, experimenting in some ways or understanding it in a thing. So I would really encourage them to have their own progression. So the day she comes and says, and if you have an environment like this in your household, where how amazing would it be that there would be a child, a teenager, a young adult who wants to buy a sex toy and comes up and says to their parents, I would really like a sex toy. And the parents are not shaming and judging and say, okay, let's have a conversation. What kind of sex toy you want? How come you want a sex toy? What are you looking for that? And they can actually have a conversation about it. I think that relationship is way better. And that's what we are looking for rather than the other way of imposing a certain kind of sexuality on your child, you know, so there's a slight difference in that. I hear you. Um, I think that, I mean, I think that this gentleman is pretty amazing because there aren't a lot of fathers like this and I cannot applaud you enough. And I think Anvita joins me in that. Um, so we think that this is really incredible and we would like to see more households because as you and I know, we see the other way around the house those where a father will actually shame a child. Uh, we got this email recently from this 20 year old, uh, 24 year old who was sexually active and her father called her all sorts of awful names. I mean, he, he was abusive when she said, I'm sexually active. So I think it's amazing that you can have that kind of relationship with your child. But I think creating um, an environment of sex positivity in the household is a lot more than merely um, being able to talk about it. I think that there is, there's a few other things that go into it because, so again, this is from personal experience. I think that even if you can actually chat to your parents a lot about it, privacy is something that a lot of people still enjoy. So you might wanna come and talk about it, but there's a certain level of uh, something that you wanna to keep to yourself. And I think that's really, really important. And so that should be the line, you know, where that the child says, okay, I want to cross over this bit, share this much with you, but not this much. Yeah, you know, we have to respect where their lines of awkwardness or weirdness lie, right? Like, so they might want to ask you questions, but they might not want to discuss details or they... Uh, you know, you might be aware of certain things, but they might not want to share all the details. Like we, we, we see that often with young boys where there will be wet sheets in the morning, you know, and you know that there has been a nightfall or they have masturbated all the way. And there are subtle ways of supporting them by leaving extra towels or leaving, you know, sheets and saying, I had a friend who said, I just left sheets and towels and just let my son know they're in this cupboard if you ever need them, rather than, you know, saying, oh, have you started masturbating? And they, you know, like they, so it's, it's really having a judgment of how much they are comfortable sharing because oversharing sometimes can make them 
be like, oh, this is yucky. I don't want to speak to my parents about this. Why are you talking to me about it? So there is, and they can actually feel uncomfortable sometimes when parents overshare or over talk. They can feel like this is really yucky and this is making me uncomfortable. So it is letting them take the space, but they know that you are not going to, that your reaction is not going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe you use the word sex or we don't talk about these dirty things. It's a bad thing to do. Rather than using those reactions, if you can say, okay, that's interesting that you have these questions. Let's have a conversation about it. Um, but give them the space of how much they want to talk and how much they want to keep to themselves. I totally agree with that. So yeah, so there is this um, there's this fine line, isn't it? And I know that the gentleman in his email actually asked that that is there a line and what is the line? So I guess what we're trying to say is that um, your attitude is amazing as it is, but um, you know that that you're open and you're creating a non-threatening environment. So a lot of people have this thing about wanting to be friends with their kids. And the idea is not to be a friend. It's not about being a friend. It's about being this really supportive person who they can come to if they have an issue. Be that open, be that trustworthy that they trust you to come to you. It's not about being a friend because the moment you say, oh, you know, I'm being a friend and they keep crossing the line, it's, it's going to happen. The idea is that as a parent, your responsibility is to be there for them. And there's a difference. So Absolutely. being open is not about being a friend. Absolutely. And I say this so often to parents because they come and say, oh, I have to be a friend. They should be able to come and speak anything to me. Yes, they should be. But you're the voice of reason. You are the voice that's telling them these are the consequences. These are the boundaries. This is how you have to be safe. Now, with friends, a lot of times there might be some, but they are similar ages to them. You know, that's their limited wisdom in some ways. And they want to experiment, take risks, and that's the feedback they get from friends. But you as a parent are the ones who are saying, have you considered the consequences? Have you considered the boundaries? You need to maintain boundaries. There are limits to things. You are the voice of reason. And the best way the example I give is that if, if there is a busy road and you have a little kid, the child doesn't want to cross the road on their own. You know, we talk about independence, but ultimately they feel way safer that they have an adult with them and they can hold their hand and cross the road, right? So they don't really want to cross the road on their own. And that's what it is. You are the parents. So when they are coming and they're saying, we are considering this, we are thinking of this, they are hoping that you will hold their hand. They are hoping that you will be the support system, which will they will say, this is how I can keep you safe. Like, have you considered how to stay safe? So you are their safety net. So don't be there to say, oh, go do this and that and everything. Uh, because what they are looking from you is boundaries and safety. Um, not, you know, being a friend in some ways, if that. Yeah, so I guess what we're saying is that uh, creating a sex positive environment in the home is absolutely essential. But there are a couple of things to think about. One is that uh, you have to teach your child responsibility equal to the pleasure that you're talking about. So yes, you know, you're going to say that in a sex positive household, we talk about pleasure, we talk about all the good things to do with it. And we talk about all the things that you would like to be doing but there is an equal amount of responsibility, which is also your duty to teach them. So don't be in a rush to be this, um, this friend who's going to just sort of push them forward to doing things. You have to do both things. And the other thing is that, like Anvita just said, you have to know how much they want to share. So there is a line between um, comfort and awkwardness. So it, let the child decide how much they want to share with you rather than you making them share it with you because you're saying, look, I can tell you about this or I can tell you about this as well. 
And you know that that in a sex positive environment, there should be an equal amount of um, ability in you as the parent to take it when the child pushes back and says, okay, you can come no further in this conversation. I want my privacy. Don't take it amiss. Don't kind of go, oh my God, I was trying to be such an amazing sex positive parent and a parent and they're saying, no, they don't want to talk to me about it. Sometimes it's actually quite overpowering for the child as well. So yeah, remember, re- yeah. So remember if we had to think about a, con- you know, continuum, there's comfort, there's awkwardness and there is feeling unsafe, you know, and, and there is a continuum in some ways. So you need to realize that what is that comfortable space that they feel enough, like this is, I feel safe with my parents, I can go and like share my problems, I can ask questions, I know they will give me reliable, safe information. And then there is awkwardness, like, you know, if a child comes and says, oh, I'm thinking, I I have questions around sex and sexuality, and uh, what do I do? Um, You know, say I have questions around masturbation and everything. And if you start sharing details, from your personal life, it might be too much information, you know, like they don't want to know, like that's just too much detail. That's like awkward maybe. But then there is an element of feeling unsafe and that as adults, it is completely our responsibility where we are not crossing the line where the child is feeling like, I am feeling very unsafe right now. I am feeling like there are a lot of boundaries being crossed and that this is making me uncomfortable. This is inappropriate. This is too much sexual information or sexual touching or sexual sharing. Like we do know just as a caveat, if if an adult shows a child pornography, that is sexual abuse. And that's what I mean by there is there is an element that we need to keep in mind that could be seen as inappropriate or unsafe. So there is a continuum. And as adults, we need to learn and we need to be responsible as what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. And we should be mindful of that. Yeah, and I think that with, um, with let's say, the person who's written in to us, I think that he's obviously intelligent enough and bright enough and Um, evolved enough to understand that quite easily I guess for a lot of other parents this is going to sound like uh, we're giving mixed messages that you know we're saying that oh you know you've got to be so much more open but you can't be so much more open so I think in closing Anvita normally I'm the one that does the closing argument so to speak and I say well this is what all we suggest today I'm going to ask you to do this Well, I think in closing, what I would say is that what's important is that you have a safe household, a safe environment where the children feel safe to come and ask questions, to have any clarities, to discuss things. And you are creating an environment that is not shaming or judging, you know, in any way that you are not judging them or shaming them for exploring sex and sexuality. However, the pace needs to be decided by the child. How much they want to share needs to be decided by the child. So in some ways, what we're saying is that the children are at the center of it, not as parents. You can give them factual information, scientific information, but at the pace they want to explore their sexuality should be their choice. The choices they want to make in some ways, like how much they want to share or how much they want to explore or what pace at which they want to sexually grow should be their choices. And you are there in some ways to support them and keep them safe and provide them where an environment uh, where you're aware of what is happening in some ways, you know, that you're not completely, that they are completely in at, at risk behaviors and you had no idea. So you are providing them with like an environment uh, that is healthy and safe uh, and not necessarily telling them what to do in some ways. Uh, and that's the distinction in some ways. And that's what we think healthy, positive sexual parenting might look like. 
I think that's extremely well put. And I really hope that everybody listening in does take away a lot from this because we want to see this change in all the households. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever it is out there listening, we want to see this change because it's only when we see this change in every average household, we know that we get to the next step, that children will start to feel more safe, they start to feel more secure, just to be able to come to an adult who has their best um, at heart. You know, I mean, as parents, there is nobody else in this world that's going to want better for your child than you do. So be that person that they can come running to if they ever have an issue. It's time to stop understanding that we don't shame them. And um, it's also time to stop, to stop leading them down this path of thinking that it is it's a dirty thing. So again, you know, that's the that's the sort of thing that we want to change. And um, and once again, thank you to the person who wrote this email in to us because you gave us a chance to have a really open dialogue about something and to bring in certain other perspectives that we had not considered talking about earlier. And I think it's opened it up even for us a great deal. So we owe you for this. We think you're pretty amazing and um, all power to you. So. Yeah. As always on the video, if you found it helpful, you found it useful, do like, comment, subscribe, tell us what you think. Send in your questions as always to info.seema.anand at gmail.com. If you need to get in touch with Anvita for a consultation, she is on anvita.madanbehel at gmail.com. Madanbehel spelled M-A-D-A-N-B-A-H-E-L. Dot com. You'll find it in the, in the description of the video anyway. In the meantime, do stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next week. See you next week.